Welcome. Mick Mayhew here from the Boom Project. I would like to speak to you today with friends and colleagues from Butterfly Conservation about perhaps the most aristocratic of insects, the Duke of Burgundy butterfly. So the origins of the name are sort of lost in the proverbial mists of time, but to those who study butterflies, lepidopterists and to amateur naturalists, this insect is often rather wonderfully just referred to as the Duke. So there's been a, a great deal of attention and focus um, on trying to restore Duke population, and the reason for that is that it has declined precipitously in abundance over the last decade or two, and its geographic distribution across Great Britain has shrunk by over 80% uh, since 1970. What are the reasons for those declines? Well, uh, loss of habitat is certainly important, overgrazing by sheep, and of course the lack of sort of traditional woodlands management. So in terms of the Boom Project area, the two key populations are on Whitbarrow National Nature Reserve and in the Rosalind Valley. Um, and then there is one uh, very small population on Gate Barrows National Nature Reserve in the Arnside and Silverdale AONB. So the Duke is a remarkably fussy little habitat specialist. You'll find it in limestone grassland areas along woodland rides and glades. Um, it requires areas that are open enough to allow light into the understory so that the larval food plants can thrive, but it also needs structure. So um, it needs a certain amount of scrub, bracken, uh, tussocks, grass tussocks, to create those warm, sheltered microclimates that the females need to oviposit or lay their eggs. It's also, interestingly, known as monophagus. So dukes, duke caterpillars, or the larvae as they're known, only feed on primula species. And in the UK, we're talking about primula veris, the cowslip, primula vulgaris, the primrose. Um, and in fact, the distribution of the butterfly reflects the distribution of those larval food plants. Primrose likes the edge of woodland, so it likes a mixture of sort of open, um, open sunshine with some shade, whereas cowslip seems to, well, thrive under pretty well nearly every condition. tends to occur in small scattered colonies. The males are very territorial. Once they've mated, the females then lay eggs in very small numbers on the underside of primrose and cowslip leaves. And uh, that tends, egg laying will typically happen from mid-May onwards. It takes a couple of weeks before the caterpillars hatch. And then the caterpillar stage lasts about six weeks before they pupate. These pupae are largely invisible, they disappear to the base of grass tussocks and almost the whole life cycle of this stunning little insect is spent in the pupal stage. So what we hope to achieve is to work with the community um, to secure the future for this butterfly by reinforcing existing sites, so in, in other words by increasing the size and population at these long established sites and by using captive breeding as a method to create what are known as satellite sites. And these sites are geographically distinct um, but connected and that's important. In other words they're far enough away from each other such that if for example there was an awful wildfire on Whitbarrow then the satellite populations wouldn't be affected, but they're close enough together to allow dispersal and movement of butterflies between these connected habitat patches. 
and that's a that's an insurance against inbreeding for example and ensures the genetic health of the wider meta population as it's known. Now the community element is really important. We want to work with the general public, with volunteers from butterfly conservation, with schools, but we're also particularly interested in working with students. And there are all sorts of potential questions that are arising that could be answered through student dissertations and placements and so on. So we'd love to know how much genetic diversity there is, for example, between the Rusland and the Whitbarrow populations. Uh, we'd like to know more about uh, the habitat requirements of the species. We'd like to know more about the dispersal potential so we can start to work out where our satellite populations should be. So there are lots of interesting unanswered questions. In essence, the activities are uh, very much seasonal in nature. So for example, in the autumn uh, last year, we used uh, the support of students and other volunteers to go out and plant cowslips to increase the uh, abundance and range of the larval food plants that the butterflies require. Then during the winter time, 2019-20, we worked with butterfly conservation volunteers to improve the habitat uh, for the Duke. And we did that by removing scrub, removing bramble, um, blackthorn, and other species that shade out the larval food plants and reduce the population of cowslips and primrose. Spring will be dominated by survey work, um, so we'll start by doing habitat surveys to map the distribution of cowslips and primulas. We'll then uh, survey the adults on the wing during the flight season in May and early June. Then in the summertime, we uh, hope to get involved in captive breeding. Uh, and the great benefit of captive breeding is that potentially you uh, produce a healthy stock of new adults that you can use to reinforce existing colonies or to create new satellite colonies by dramatically reducing the mortality that you would find at different stages of the life cycle under natural circumstances. I should say at this point that uh, any captive breeding effort will be very closely supervised by experts from butterfly conservation and will only happen under certain strict conditions. So there'll be lots of survey work preceding any captive breeding effort and only if there is deemed to be a surplus of eggs to harvest at the donor sites will they be taken uh, and used in a captive breeding project. Down and I'm working from home. Soon, I think, I hope, we'll be able to get out and start looking for Duke of Burgundy butterflies. I think by the time we do get out, they will have found that the butterfly has been flying around for two or three weeks and is probably coming to the end of its flight period. However, that's not the end of the story with this butterfly because then you can start looking for eggs and then we can start looking for larvae and the feeding damage that the larvae does. Um, the feeding damage that the larvae does is quite interesting. It looks like it, the leaves have been shot by a shotgun. And that's the sort of monitoring that we can do in June and July. And it's a butterfly we can work with all the year round, really, because there's the food plant that it feeds on, cowslips and primroses. They can be grown up all year round, and then they can be planted out from September to March. Uh, and also, we can survey for the, uh, for the food plant in uh, early spring. So we go looking for primroses and good habitat for the butterfly, or potential habitat for the butterfly, in March, when the primroses are flowering and standing out. I'm at a site in Rusland, um, which I know has got lots of primroses growing in it. I'm just here looking for Duke of Burgundy butterflies. And here we are, lovely female, just laid some eggs on some primroses and now she's taking a 
bit of a rest in the sunshine. So I know the breeding round here and the females should have laid some eggs so I'm just searching plants. This is about the 30th plant that I've looked at and I think I found some eggs underneath. So the females lay their eggs on underneath just on the edges of the plants. There's three little white Duke of Burgundy eggs. She might have laid them on the ones too. It's a bit of a needle in a haystack, but it's uh, quite addictive. I uh, can't see any more on here. So it's, it's a great butterfly to work with, and it's really nice that we can be involved with Boom and all their volunteers, and we're looking forward to uh, working with those for the next several years. So working in partnership is absolutely crucial, not just in terms of providing us with the expertise and the guidance and the supervision that we need, but it also, to some extent, ensures the legacy of what we're doing. Boom is just a four-year project. At the end of the four years, um, those, that network of partnerships will hopefully ensure that the good work, the research, and the habitat management and so on goes on. So we've got lots of exciting activities planned for the Duke of Burgundy project and we would love to have you along. So if you've got some time to volunteer with us, then we can provide you with training opportunities and workshops to teach you about a whole variety of subjects relating to these priority butterfly species.